I'll uh, call the, the select board to order and I'll turn it over to Scott. And he's oh, muted. Uh, and we gotta go through the whole process with Scott now. So you'll have to try and unmute yourself now, Scott. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes we can. can. All right, what do you want me to do? Hi, Scott. Just hey. bring the trustees to order. Oh, uh, that might be a, a hard task, but <laughs> my attempt. Um, I am calling the trustees to order. Okay. Uh, and like I said, Gordy's having some technical difficulties. He just advised us to start without him. Gordy and I did go over some rules of engagement for tonight. And what we wanted to do was leave all board members mics unmuted. And if anyone wants to speak, then try to get either Gordy or in this case, Scott now attention and you'll be recognized. And on each agenda item, we'll give an opportunity for the two boards to make their motions in seconds and any type of discussions before we open it up to the public. Uh, we're going to try to stick to the, uh, the allotted minutes that are in the agenda. When we get to the time of the end of the, that allotted time, if we're still going, I will or Gordy or Scott will remind the uh, boards that uh, we are at the allotted time. And does the boards want to continue with discussions or are they prepared to take action? I think that was about it. The other, the only other thing was that uh, there is at least one or two new members of trustees, and uh, Gordy was going to take the opportunity to introduce them to the select board. And you probably want to go ahead and do that, Scott. Yeah. So um, why don't we just go through everybody? Okay, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, we're mostly new. <clears throat> um, I'm not, but uh, I'm Scott and I've been a trustee for quite a while. Um, also the vice chair. So I take over when Gordy's unable to, uh, which is new uh, for me to experience. And uh, part of the COVID um, planning part for the emergency management team. And I'll punt it to Athena. Hi, I'm Athena. I have lived in Johnson for almost four years now. Uh, I'm a graduate of NVU and I live on Railroad Street uh, with my partner Shane and our two cats. Um, and I'm pretty new to the board. I've been on since August, so almost five months, I think. I'll pass it on to Will. Looks next in the line. Yeah, Will Jennison. Uh, I think everybody here knows me. If uh, uh, former trustee back on again, at least for a little while, and uh, lifelong so far resident of Johnson. And Steve. Hi, I'm Steve Hatfield. I've <laughs> lived in Johnson for a little over three years, and I'm brand new to the board, so I'm uh, just trying to figure out what's going on. <laughs> Welcome board. Thank you. And is there any other trustees or is that all of them? Uh, I think we all know Gordy. Yeah. Um, myself, Eric Osgood, chair of the select board. Been here many, many years. Uh, Mike? I'm Mike Dunham, a lifelong resident of Lamoille County. Uh, 36 years, basically in Johnson. Uh, been on about every board in Johnson one time or another. Uh, been a JP for over 30 years. Uh, trustee on the adversarial board for eight years. Uh, now I'm on the select board in my fifth year. Uh, Doug? Douglas Moldy, I, I live in Cotton Hollow. I've been in Johnson since longer than Michael, I guess, 1977. Um, wow, but you haven't beat me in the county though. Oh, oh no, oh no, that might be a good thing. Uh, <laughs> I've been on the, uh, I was on the planning commission for about 22 years. I've been on the select board for nine years. I'm an attorney in town um, and I'm vice chair uh, presently. Oh, I'm, also, 
I'm also, and you folks may be interested in this, I'm, I'm, the, I'm an alternate representative of the, on the governing board of the uh, communication union district. And I'm one of the five members on the executive committee that's hoping to get us broadband into the seven towns that are member of the moral fiber net. Thank you, Doug. Kyle? Yes, hi, Kyle Noose, um, born and raised in Johnson, but lived um, for almost 15 years around the world and in New York City. Came back, I, have, uh, I own two businesses in the village. I live in the village, but I have town property in the town. Um, and I've been on the board for five years. Um, and I'm chair of the beautification committee and um, was president of Johnson Works and recently um, stepped down from that position. And yeah, that's about it. Thank you. And Nat, last but not least. Nat Kinney, select board. It's, I think my ninth year on the select board. And um, yeah, it's good to be here. <laughs> and I see we have Rosemary on board. Everybody knows her. I don't think we need introductions there. Uh, who was going to take the lead on the uh, employee compensation benefits? Either Brian or Meredith, I or Rosemary, I expect. I'm happy to to jump in if folks would like. Okay. Just take it off. Yeah. Um, so every year, uh, the two boards um, historically have gotten together to talk about. Um, the level of health insurance that the employer will provide to employees, as well as uh, um, rate of compensation increase. Um, we usually look at the um, inflation rate or cost of living adjustment sort of as a little bit of a baseline just to help us orient ourselves. Um, in past years, we've had um, joint employees where we've discussed, um, you know, the, what applies to them and then generally have applied it to all employees. Um, a change this year is that the village, uh, part of the village staff has, falls under a union contract now. So uh, on the village side, um, it'd be uh, our joint officers, Susan and Rosemary's position, and then the office staff uh, for the village, which is myself and Marla, um, that would be covered by tonight's conversation. Um, and I guess, Brian, did you wanna add anything about the town side before we get into more of the specifics? Not too much. Uh you know, just our, our general principle has been as much as is practical to kind of keep things uniform between town and village. Uh, so this is a little bit broader interest, uh, but it is the conversation tonight is about uh, Rosemary and Susan Tinker uh, for the audience. Uh, since they, since Rosemary is an elected position and Susan is Rosemary's direct report, they don't exactly work for the town or village, but they are compensated by the town and the village. Uh, so that, that puts them in kind of a unique position, uh, hence the, the discussion tonight. Yeah, and I would uh, also remind everyone the focus of the discussion is only on those two office positions. Uh, the town will take up its own town only employees and the village will take up their village only employees at some later time. But the purpose of tonight was to discuss uh, the only positions now that go across both the town and village. And I guess I, just for what the trustees have received from me, um, all the figures I sent out uh, reflected the costs for all administrative non-unionized employees. So inclusive of myself, Marla, Susan, Rosemary, and a portion of Anne that um, the village covers. So when we're talking about dollar figures, if I reference anything that references the whole group, if you want me to focus on the subset um, of uh, Susan and Rosemary, I can provide those numbers. I have a spreadsheet that I could provide. I think what we're doing for one, we're doing for everybody. So, I mean, if you keep the reference to everybody, that would be beneficial in my opinion. And that was sort of my thinking going into the meeting. Yep. yep. Thank you. So do we want to start with um, wage adjustments? Yeah, why don't you go ahead? Okay, so um, 
Historically, we've looked at the uh, consumer price index for the preceding 12 months. Um, I think we've done that pretty much every year for the last four years that Brian and I have been doing this. Uh, this year, it's uh, about 1.4% for the month ended uh, September 30th. And so for wage adjustments, um, we, I think, but I'm, I believe Brian also provided um, you know, costs and I provided to the trustees costs for a 2% and a 2.5% uh, increase. So uh, just a, a little bit above one, you know, 2% just a little bit above inflation and then the 2.5% um, might represent overinflation with something that might be more considered more of a, a raise, um, not just keeping track with inflation. Um, so we thought that those would be two reasonable numbers to look at. Um, you said 1.4 was COLA currently or? Yeah, for the month ended September 30th. Okay. Is that able to be displayed? It is. You, that should be up on your screen now. Yeah, can you enlarge on it a little? Yeah. Perfect, thank you. And I'm assuming the trustees have the memo I sent out to you in front of you. Um, if you don't and you need me to, I can send it to Brian so he can put it on the screen, but I assumed you would probably have it with you, but let me know. Oh, that would be great if it could be on the screen. Sure. Yep, I'll send Thank it you. Yep. Yep. And Meredith and Brian, remind me, what did we decide on last year? Last year, I believe, was 1.5%. Uh, right. OK, thank you. If the cost of living increase was 1.4% as per September, why? Uh, do we not show something around one and a half percent as well? Uh, I can do that pretty easily. What you're showing, Brian, uh, for office salary, what does that include? That includes myself, Lisa, uh, the town share of uh, Rosemary, Susan, um, and Ann. And Ann and Marla. Okay. Any comments from board members? Right here. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, if we're just considering two employees, why are we being kind of uh, cluttered with all of the rest of this? Uh, I guess that's because of the way they brought it up for presentation. But yep. if, we... if you want to give me, let me put up uh, the village's data and I can take a couple minutes to clean ours up so that we're only reflecting the two employees. Uh, and I apologize, based on the internal conversations uh, we had in the office, we were lumping, for informational purposes, we included uh, obviously more than you really want to focus on right now. Yeah, so, I, I, I think that this is just a little, a little right. messy if we're just considering two employees right now. So I'm going to put up the... Uh, the villages while I make a couple adjustments to ours. Uh, 
And that is, there we go. So okay. Meredith, the, uh, the sheet that was just up, that includes the village and town employees? Is that the entire office? I mean, I didn't understand what, who would cover? No, that, that is just town office. Just town office, okay. Yep, and so this sheet is just um, village. Uh, and as Brian said, so it's um, all of me, the 80% of Marla that we pay, the 40% of Anne, Susan, and Rosemary. And so I was just coming up, um, figuring out the 1.5% number for you folks. Um, looks like 1.5% is 3,484. So um, it's about, you know, $700 or so less than the 2%. And that 3,000 would be the whole uh, village contribution for all the office folks, not just uh, Susan and Rosemary. Right, that's the additional amount that we would pay in wages um, over and above what we paid in 2020 for um, the village share of all office staff, basically. Okay. 100% so of me and then 80% of Marlon and 40% of the rest. Okay. And that's inclusive of FICA and retirement contributions as well. Inclusive, you said? Yep. Okay. And as I mentioned, and you can see on the, what's up on the screen, you know, the large portion of that is allocated to the electric department. So what's actually borne by the general department and comes out of property taxes is, you know, quite small. So it would be for 1.5%, it would be under $200. Any board oh. members? I can't. Oh. Go ahead, Doug. Uh, yeah, if we were looking at the total increase in compensation, we'll have to, maybe we already had the number up, but we have a combination number of what the, the rate would, what the total between the village and the town would come rather than, you know, the town, the town is in the position where we look to the electric department to, to pay or, you know, we, we do it all comes from taxes. Um, so, but I'm interested in uh, in the, the the total increase, you know, be, between the town and the village, also, and maybe that number's already been there. Um. So I basically you would basically take um, in this chart that you're looking at the the second row down general department allocation. Um, we would add either 199.81 or 249.76 to whatever Brian's numbers are. Um, for terms of what's being paid by taxes. And then, but for the total raises, for the total cost, you know, um, we would, you would add the electric department allocation too. You're just, uh, you have a funding source, you know. Sure, yeah, I thought you were mentioning you wanted the total amount being paid by taxpayers. No, no, I want the, basically the total amount the uh, employees would receive, the sum yep. of the, the village and the town whatever the whatever the, the pot it's coming from. And just to clarify, this is just office staff. This doesn't include for the village any of our field staff. Right. I didn't prepare those numbers for tonight because that's not part of this the decision tonight. Yep. And I'm sorry, Meredith, if you already said this, but th this is a monthly number? Nope, this is annual. Okay, so that, oh, I see, it's just the increase. Yes, it's just the increase. Okay. The, it's the what we're increasing the budget over and above 2020. Okay. Well, I'm assuming that the 1.5 would be somewhere around 150 bucks. For the electric department? No, yeah, for the general department. Oh, for the, yeah, for the general department, it is, uh, oh, I have to do the math. <laughs> uh, yeah, it would be, I can do a share. Let's see. Maybe three quarters of it, so that'd be about 150. Yeah, I came up with 167. Okay. Just 
using percentage basis versus the long calculation. Yep. And very roughly, Brian, I would say on the town side, at the 2%, it was about a $4,000 total increase in the whole office expense. Mm -hmm. yep. If you backed out everyone, but uh, Rosemary and Susan were probably in the $2,000 range. Uh, it looks like 1,000. I've got that uh, fixed okay. and ready for it. Uh, are we ready to switch back to the town or do you want a little bit more with the village? I'm good. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> I'm going to bring this back around again. If we're only discussing the town clerk and assistant town clerk as a joint meeting, why are we muddying the waters with some of this stuff that we just uh, heard and discussed? Well, we're trying to get there, but it's the way it's being presented. Is well, we're only here to discuss two employees, the town clerk and the assistant town clerk. Uh, I don't think some of this stuff is germane to that discussion, do you? So just, I can offer just to give you some background, Mike, um, when I mentioned this to at the trustees meeting um, last week, <laughs> it seems like a lot longer ago, um, you know, I asked, should we just focus only on those two employees? And the sort of impression I got was we're most likely going to try and keep it, you know, what we approve for Susan and Rosemary in terms of increases is the same thing that we're going to apply to the other employees. So we, that's why I tried to give at least for the trustees, the full picture. Um, you know, if we were going to apply the same thing across the board, they could understand the financial implications of that decision. Um, that that's why I did it that way. Okay. Uh, to Mike's point, you if you look at what's being displayed now, Brian has pulled out just for the town clerk and assistant and assistant impact to the town only would be a thousand dollars. And change for the two percent for the two percent yeah and i can pretty easily change that to any other category if you want yeah. to see it brian could you un try unmuting gordy and see if it works all right uh, let me see i want uh what's he connected under uh, one five five three one. Yep. So he, he called in. He's showing up as one five five three one. <laughs> Our passcode. Yeah, I'm not sure what that looks like when you log in, but Gordy's not the only one that has had that problem. Huh. All right. I've asked him to unmute. So Gordy, you should be able to unmute yourself. Try again. Okay, I just sent another unmute, Gordy. No, it doesn't look like it took. No, I can um, have him. If we can keep him muted. I think he could call. I can call him and. Uh, we won't get feedback and hopefully that way he can at least talk. So I'll try giving him a call. I'm gonna mute myself for a second, Brian. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So I've got the town figures up now, uh, separated out just the town clerk and assistant. Already just unmuted himself. So let's see if we can hear him. Okay. You guys hear me? Yes, we hey. can hear you. <laughs> I'm on Carolyn's computer and I tried calling in, I couldn't get unmuted by the phone call. So I, then Carolyn set me up with her computer. If you missed a lot or, I mean, we just started into this really. We did the introductions, uh, went over the things you and I talked about uh, and basically just really started into the meat of the, the salaries. Okay, I'm all set I guess here. I wanna hold you guys up. So I guess for the select board, you can see what the impacts are on the different percentage increases. 
I would look for some kind of uh, guidance from the select board, what you might like to see for an increase so that we can get into the benefits. And as a reminder, our budget planning last year, uh, we uh, went in with an estimated 3% increase so that we would be able to make a decision tonight without having a you know, budget impact mid-year that okay. we were unprepared for. Thank you, Matt. So in my mind, um, this question is very much tied to the, um, to the question of how much health insurance is going up and, and who's gonna- um, Who's paying what? Who's paying what? So I, I don't-, I don't so Is it the board's preference to go into the benefits side? Well, that's the only way that we can see this whole package. I mean, we just can't okay. go ahead and give an increase and then, then, uh, then absorb an increase in healthcare. That's fair year. enough. Uh, Gordy, do you, <laughs> you, where does the trustees want to go with this? I think speaking for myself, what I'd like to see is a, a, a motion, whether it's seconded or voted or not, would be, it's a combination of, uh, I'm going to throw this on the table, just for discussion, would be a 2.5% pay increase and dropping from 91% down to 90% health insurance, dropping 1%, getting back closer to 80, but just dropping 1%. So I'd like to see a motion. They both are intertwined with each other. It's all benefits and pay. And I'd like to see whatever you, the both boards decide would be to, I think like Mike or Will was saying, is, is tying both together or not. Yeah. Can we look at, Gordy, can we look at the, um, the numbers on the, uh, the health insurance first before we go into a motion because all we've seen so far is just the increase of the south of the cola yes so can we have uh meredith and and uh brian look at the give us the numbers on the uh contributions for insurance first yep so i've switched it over to um villages healthcare so that's what should be up right now. Okay. And give me a moment on that while you discuss. So this is a monthly, annual, weekly. I think Meredith. Oh, and Meredith, muted. she had to mute herself for a minute, so. Okay, Meredith, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you, sorry. Um, right. Yep, so, so this is uh, the annual increase um, in, increase in costs. So um, over and above what the village paid for health insurance for the, the subsect of employees in 2020. So if we um, kept it at 91% contribution, our share of health insurance costs would go up $843 for these employees. Again, we're not counting the costs that are um, gonna be associated with the line workers. And if we dropped it to only 90% um, contribution, it would go up by $451. So $451 total per employee per month? No, annually. Annually for all the employees? For the, the these employees that we're talking about, not including the line workers, the, the office staff. All the, on the entire office staff of, of the village? Yes, what the village pays for for office staff. Hmm. Are we in a very similar position in the town side, Brian? Moment here. I can while it's, Brian's it's looking, I can similar, I, I can add that you know the the gross number um, is a much bigger number. So I mean I don't wanna hide you know how much we're paying. So last year for this subsect of employees we paid um, $35,658 um, towards insurance. So it's, you know, a large number. It's just, uh, we're lucky that the Blue Cross Blue Shield premiums are not going up 10% this year like they have in previous years. Um, and so our share of that increase is, you know, relatively manageable this year. So we're currently at 91%, correct? Correct. And the share increase, is that a 50-50 match of increase between the employee and the us employer? Uh, this is, 
this is taking the the new premium cost mm -hmm. so you know that premium's gone up by 2.4 percent taking that new premium cost and allocating 91 percent of that new cost to the employer so it's okay. just using the exact same ratio as last year okay So, so what this doesn't reflect is what the increase would be to the employee. That's correct. Yeah. Do we know that number? I can calculate it. And Brian, I don't know. Do you have it broken out by individual? I have it for uh, I have it for um, total, but I don't have it for an individual. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mike. I think every year that I've been on the board, I have asked for a total breakdown of wages, uh, health care, vacation, sick, and, and you name it, uh, right down to the penny, the total compensation package for every employee. And it seems like every time we get to this point, we're trying to figure this out on the fly. It would have been so much simpler if we'd all had a breakdown of every one of these things that I've asked for uh, in the last five years uh, before us, before we make a decision. Uh, that's how most companies do things today. They have everything all broken out and actually the employee gets to see what their total package is too. Every single employee gets one every year. And so uh, again, uh, hopefully, uh, when we get to the point where we are just dealing with the only the town's employees, that we have something in front of us that we can go by. So noted. Brian, do you have the numbers for the impact to the employee on these increases if we maintain the 91% versus the 90%? Yeah, the 90 to 91 percent change would be uh, $700 annually, $775 annually. Increase. Yeah. So without any change at 91, what's their increase? Without any changes, 91%. Let's see. That would be about $240. So they would see a $240 increase if we kept it status quo. And if we re, uh, reduced it to 90% contribution, their increase would be 700 over that 240. 
Roughly. Yeah, per person, Brian? Yes, that should be per person. Eric? Yes, go ahead, Mike. I believe this is an average, not each individual employee. Some yes. people are going to see more. Some people are going to see less. So that's why in the past, I have always asked for a breakdown on every single employee. And that way that we are better prepared to make a decision. I don't think we are in a position to make a decision because we're not really prepared. Where I would differ with you, Mike, is we need to look at it as an average because we would not give individual pay increases. Uh, I understand that, Eric, but it gives us a better idea of the, what, what we're putting on the employees. If it helps, uh, the number I did use was for the um, two-person plan, which is our most common plan. Uh, but yeah, it's not, it's not universal. Okay. You know, the dollar figures would change if that person that was on a, uh, family plan or, uh, or, or what have you, but, um, percentage wise, it'll be the same that the, the employee is receiving a 2.4% increase in whatever they pay now. Okay. Just like the town is experienced a 2.4% increase. It's just our share is larger. So 2.4% of the 91% share is obviously bigger than 2.4% increase of the employee's smaller share. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mike. By all rights, we should table this till we have uh, better data. Unfortunately, we don't have that luxury. We got to make this decision so that our the, the officers can make their medical contribute uh, selections. Brian, can I just clarify what you were giving for figures? Yeah. Um, so my calculation for a two-person plan, um, and this year, um, the employee would pay um, sixteen seventy-nine as the. 91% or their 9% share of the plan cost. And then if that 91 were kept for next year, it would go up to 17, 19. So an increase of $40. And then if it went down to 90% or, you know, they, they would have to pay 10%, it would increase by $231 over the previous year. I'm not coming up with that big of a... Nope. Yeah, uh, I apologize for trying to do this on the fly, but yeah. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> As I said a few minutes ago, it's hard to do this on the fly when we're not actually prepared to make a decision. I think if I might speak for Gordy, his intent was to start moving this down in the healthcare contribution giving it a little larger than COLA increase in salary. Right. Because my, my goal for the last 10 years is, or five years is to keep bringing the, the percentage slowly down at the, for the percentage. It used to be 100% a lot of places, and then 95.5, and now it's down to 91.9. And I think most places in the outside world, I know it's apples to oranges, and speaking for the trustees, when we come have done wages in comparison. We do it with the other munis, which is a little bit different. But I know some places are 80, 20. So speaking for myself, I just think that we should take 1% from 91 down to nine, <clears throat> but also as a, and I think we should get more as Eric said, some for the uh, members to offset some of it. But there's one other thing I think, I know, I know I'm not gonna talk about one person or two. I'm gonna talk about all the people in the office because that otherwise that would be confidential in executive session but we've had two new employees in the office one changed position and hired a new one and the other two have been crossed well actually three have been cross training so there's been a lot of extra work on our employees this past year and then you throw on the covid virus on top of everything and i've never heard one employee from the office complain or ask for extra time 
they just they continue to do the work and i just think we should we should show some appreciation for they stuck with us and that's why i, I like the 91.9 and the, the two and a half percent but that's my take on everything gordy just to clarify you said 91.9 but do you mean 90 percent right i'm sorry yeah. okay yeah 90 10 yeah Any board comment? Um, I'll just, I guess, echo what, what Gordy said in, in a sense that I do think it's really important um, to compensate folks for probably the extra time and energy and just emotions that have surrounded COVID. Um, I think that the two and a half percent is the way to go. Um, and I appreciate uh, your clarification, Meredith, on the 91-90 split. Um, that gives much more perspective. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if I was an employee wanting to be appreciated, I would want to hang on to my 91% because that is the, that number is imposed on the town and the village from the outside. Has, we have less, con the entities have less control over that and uh, I'd rather have a larger percentage when I almost have an expectation that the wages are more stable from year to year. So I see this as a, you know, perhaps arguably long overdue moving back of, of, of the contributions to be more normal in that people are doing, but I think it's also representative of the terrible medical care funding system that we have. And so I don't see this as a as benefiting them. If I were an employee, I don't see it as, as benefit as much as, as Gordy perceives it as. I guess just to clarify, I don't I don't know how I feel about the, the 90 and 91 percent. I was speaking strictly about their wages. Just to clarify, I realize I didn't mention that in my comment. Mike? I do appreciate uh, what the uh, employees have done. Uh, during this crisis. There's no question about that. But we should not forget that last year we had a tremendous increase in health care costs and the employees saw very little or none of that increase. Uh, so, I mean, I understand last year is last year, this year is this year, but our employees have been treated very, very well in their compensation packages and their health care packages because they are given the goal plan. Uh, and a lot of other companies, uh, a lot of other employees don't get that plan. I mean, I, I talked to somebody uh, recently whose spouse, they had to make a contribution of $150 a week toward health care and they have a $10,000 deductible. Uh, we have a far better uh, health care than, than that. So it's, there comes a time that employees are going to have to start contributing more to their health care uh, because we can't ask the, uh, the townspeople who the vast majority of them do not have these same options that we give our employees. And they are the taxpayers uh, that fund this. Uh, just a note, I'm unable to see more than about five or six people. Probably everyone else is in the same boat. So if one of the board members wants to speak, you're probably just going to have to uh, try to speak over something. Um, I, I want to bring up a couple points. Hey, Brian, yep. I think Nat's trying to say something. Yeah, go ahead, Nat. I think both Nat and Scott need to be unmuted. Okay, let me get them. Okay, go ahead, Nat, and unmute. Yeah, um, Will's also muted. I think he wants to be unmuted. I, I just raised my hand to get unmuted. I think Scott has been waving his hand for a while. Thank you. I apologize. I'm not seeing anybody. Yeah. <laughs> Open okay. this. Get, get rid of those numbers, Brian. Open up the screen again. Stop the screen share, it'll help. All right, hold on. 
hold on. Let me get people unmuted. Okay. My buzzer goes off again. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, all right, that should be everybody who was waiting. Was there a, Scott or Will, did you have a question? Go ahead, Scott. Do you want to go, Will, first? Go, go, go Scott. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to um, some of um, Gordy's comments earlier. Um, I think that was it. Yeah, Kyle. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to say that I, I agree. I would love in the future to have the whole picture. It's so hard for me, especially with numbers, to just kind of be trying to figure this out in, in my head. So if we could get more, more comprehensive spreadsheets um, showing all the different aspects of what we're talking about, that would be helpful for me. Um, but can you just remind us? Uh, so you said we budgeted for two and a half percent increase. We budgeted for a three percent increase okay. and a. Uh, let me double check this. Uh, we budgeted for a health care increase of eight uh, percent. Okay. Could you, for clarification, for audience and, and trustees. Our budget runs calendar or runs fiscal year instead of calendar year. So for when we interact with things that are on the calendar year, we have to make an estimate for them for the six months where they don't overlap. So we estimated that on January 1st, we would make some kind of uh, increase to employee compensation. And we picked the number 3% last year, not as a target to hit 3%, but more of a, you know, we'll be safe if we pick that number. Uh, and similarly with the uh, insurance, we picked 8% as a possible increase uh, just because we don't know what they're gonna change. And last, the year before, it went up by over 10%. Um, we didn't think they'd do that again, but we picked eight as kind of a reasonable number to estimate for. Okay, and remind me how much the health care went up. It didn't go up 10%, it went up three? 2.4%. Uh, okay, so, so we have budgeted a 3% increase in pay and a 10% increase in health care. Uh, 8% increase in eight, eight, sorry, yes, okay. So both of these have come under our, well, the, the employee compensation is entirely up to us to, to set, but um, the, the healthcare has come under and the numbers that we kind of picked out to, to try out are also under. Uh, mm -hmm. Perfect. So we're, we're in good shape for the numbers that we're talking about tonight. Brian, can you remove your screen share just so I can see. <laughs> sure. Okay. And sorry, one more question just for history's sake. So last year we did a 1.5 increase at a 91% health care package compensation. Yes. And then the year before? The year before that, uh, I think the year before that might have been for a time, we were at 91.5%. Mm -hmm. I think the year before might have been when we took back the, the 0.5%. Uh, but I think that was another, it was around 1%. It was 1% or maybe 1.25 or 1.5. Meredith, do you remember what it was the year before? I don't remember. I'd have to go back and look at my budget to see what I put in, which I yeah. try and do. Um, yeah, if you can look that up for a second, that would be great. Um, uh, yeah. It's great to have sort of a five-year snapshot of that too, just because I like to see where we've been, where we've come, where we're going. Yeah, thanks. We got a question for Gordy. So Gordy, you were saying move it down to 90% share and then a 2.5% on COLA. 
Yeah. Okay. And then as soon as Meredith is done with this task, I got a question for her. It's going to take me a sec, so you may want to. <laughs> Eric, I just want to pre-warn you that. While we're, while we're waiting, what? Um... Mike that would like to say something. Yeah, but... Go ahead, Mike. Eric, uh, even 90% is kind of unheard of, really, in most businesses. I mean, let, let's face it. Uh, we're we're going to, we need to talk, you know, this isn't nice things to talk about, but, but it's the truth and we need to talk about it. We always seem to do this every year. We get right down to the wire. We have to make a decision at the snap of a finger. I think we need to do some big work on this in the next year. A lot of companies uh, do self-funding. Uh, they pick a lesser plan. And then they put the amount of money that they were going to pay for the better plan in a bank. And then they uh, pay the differences uh, to their employees from their lesser coverage. And I, I talked to somebody that had in a company that doing this after a few years, they had a tremendous amount of money in that bank of theirs and they saved their company a lot of money. Uh, so we need to be looking into uh, some kind of creative ways to save the town money. And uh, we need to be working on this during the coming year. So we don't get to this point that we're figuring on the fly and we have to have an answer in about five seconds because that is not the way to do business. And we've been doing it this way for too long and it needs to stop. So at the 2018 joint meeting, so when we were selecting the numbers for 2019, um, the boards approved a 2.65% pay increase and 91% um, um, health insurance coverage. What year was that? That was what we voted on in 2018 as we were going into 2019. So two years ago. Okay. Today, basically. So that was 2.65%. I was looking, I went to the minutes. I figured that would be faster. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so. Uh, and what we, was the, sorry, Meredith, what was the healthcare? It was 91% still. So 91 and 2.6. Okay, so we did a big drop. Okay. In that case, Gordy's got a better deal going for us. So now. Uh, Oh, Will, did you have a follow-up question you were going to ask? Yeah, I was going to, as soon as Meredith is. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, all right. So if we're following Gordy's uh, initial suggestion of uh, backing down to 90% of 2.5% and COLA, it yep. uh, looks like an increase of 56.35, uh, given your numbers. And I realize that a portion of that for will come out of electric and water and sewer and so on and so forth. But... If, if we just took the 56 and just call it tax dollars on the village, what kind of, what kind of number would that generate to be a uh, percentage would need to be taken from taxes to cover say a $5,600 increase? I mean, that's a pretty small amount, isn't it? Uh, well, no, I mean, the village only collects about $113,000 in property taxes. Um, so I don't think we'd want to assume, you know, yeah. in that scenario, it'd be, um, 250 plus uh, basically $16. So I can do the quick math, say 266 divided by 113,000. You know, that's 0.2% um, of mm -hmm. an increase on what's funded by taxes. Two times 4%. Yeah. Okay. So the impact is not that great. No, not for the general department. You know, and I've mentioned before, you know, the bulk of that will go to the electric department and I anticipate it being a very challenging budget year for the electric department, just right. because all our sales are down. We've got some big cost, big ticket items on the horizon. So um, I don't wanna discount that, you know, it, it is, there'll be several thousand dollar increase for the electric department and every penny is gonna count next year. So, so as far as general goes, we're not, we're not really, um, 
it's not something I'm, I would. Not, not as concerned, but when it comes to electric with our with our last meeting or night before, I can't remember, but um, we do have some issues coming down from there, so we do got to be pay attention to the increases on the electric side. Yeah, yeah we do. Okay. And on our side, um, we're looking at some tough budget times too. With uh, I'm sure the next year's, um, you know, so much of our money comes from the state through pilot funding, and we were made whole with pilot funding this this year, thankfully. Yep. Um, but that's going to get more and more challenging. I think even getting highway money has uh, uh, been challenging. So. Uh, I'm very proud of the. I, I'm very proud that we that we offer a good health insurance um, and that we're supportive. Um, been very reluctant to lower that in the past, but um, ninety percent is is a is a really respectable compensation for, for health care for, for anyone um, in these times. So I. Two and a half percent seems also, given the budget, the budgets that we're looking at, to me, that looks seems uh, very generous. Um, it, looking around and seeing, you know, how much uh, um, financial hardship there is with our with our taxpayers. So, um, I would I would go with that proposal from. From Gordy, but I would uh, I would also go with something less. Eric, yes, go ahead, Gordy. I guess we've heard from I think most everyone. So I guess coming on to the hour, we need to see if we can get a consensus as we've done in years past on a percentage of the health insurance and the increase, and see if we can get at least three trustees and three select board to. Uh, to approve that. So maybe if there's a different number that Nat likes or some of the other guys like, I say, let, let's hear, you've heard what some of them are and let's see if we can get a consensus on a vote. And if it, and uh, we've done it in the past where we, the first time we voted, it was uh, it was uh, too far apart. And we've actually compromised, I think a year or two ago to, to meet the difference, yeah. like the 2.65. So I'm ready to, if Eric, if you are the other county co-chair is to, get a motion on the floor and then let's see if we can get three votes from both boards to discuss whatever that motion is. I like it. Will? Well, yeah. Um, I, I'm kind of in, I'm, I'm kind of lining with Nate that um, given, I mean, this has nothing to do with the value of the employees. You know, I mean, they're obviously, uh, you know, I, I interact with them quite a bit and um, I've never had a bad experience. But it also has to reflect uh, the economy and, and our and our local economy. And um, I'll make a motion for um, ninety percent pay of the insurance and a two percent increase for cola. Uh, it's above above the one point four. And as Mike so well put out, that uh, you know even at ninety percent, we're still well above the. Uh, what, what people are seeing, what people are getting for insurance uh, from their employers. So it takes a step in towards equalizing that and uh, the 2% is still above the, the 1.4. I'll make that a motion. I'll second that. That was a mo that was a second by Scott? Yes. Yeah. Just so Donna knows. Okay, Eric, it's all yours. I guess I would look to see if there's a, a board's pleasure in mirroring that same motion. I make that same motion. A second. We got a motion and a second. Okay, now we can open it up for discussion. If there is none, if you want, Gordy, we could open it up for public comment. If Brian recognizes anyone that would like to talk to this. Yeah. All right, if you're ready, then I'll open up to public comment. Uh, so raise your hand uh, electronically or, or with your camera, and uh, I'll try and call on you. All right, I'm not seeing anybody in the audience. Um, with Gordy's approval, I'd like to also 
in, invite and if she has any input, uh, Rosemary, as this would directly affect her and her employee. Okay, I'm asked Rosemary to unmute if she would like to. Good evening, Rosemary. Hello. Um, I would be in favor of the the motions that were are, that were stated. Okay. In my own Thank mind, that's where I thought you guys would come at. Oh, you should have said higher. <laughs> that's why we started with two and a half. <laughs> that's how they bargain. She knows how to do this. Yeah, it's not her first time on the rodeo. <laughs> Any other comment from She's board? She's quiet members? but deadly. <laughs> Not seeing any for the select board. I would say all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Nay. And the ayes have it. Okay, on the village side, if there's no further discussion, all those in favor of the motion signify with an aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, guys and gals. Uh, Thank you. Athena, did you raise I was, your hand? I was, I, I was opposed. I, I think it should be two and a half. But you opposed? I, yeah, I think it should That's be two and a half. Call. But I feel better that Rosemary feels that two is, is excellent. So that makes me happy. And thank you for all your work, Rosemary. You're welcome. Thank you. You need a roll call. Yeah, you'll have to do a roll call where you call on each trustee individually to say whether they're a yay or nay. That's if it's not unanimous, right? Correct. Yes. Yep. All right. For the village trustees, Scott. Yay. Will. Yay. Athena. Nay. And Steve. Yay. And myself, yes. Okay. <laughs> Okay, thank you everyone. For the next light item is uh, designated Martin Luther King Day. I believe maybe the trustees should enlighten all of the select board on why this was brought forward. I don't know, Gordy or Meredith wants to talk to it. Sure, um, so it came up, um, as I mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, um, this year back in, I think it was June, um, we signed a contract for our uh, line crew with IBEW and um, part of what was negotiated for them was um, the addition of Martin Luther King Jr. Day as a holiday. Um, currently our offices, um, our staff don't get that as a paid holiday. Um, and so when Gordy and I were talking about the joint meeting, um, we've often tried to keep things consistent amongst employees. So currently only one subsection of village employees received that as a holiday. And we thought since we still have um, somewhat of a joint personnel policy um, that we were gonna talk about adding to the holiday for office staff on the village side, it made sense to talk about it as a group to see if the town was interested in doing so as well. But it was part of that negotiation. Um, Gordy pointed out that it was, you know, a back and forth negotiation process through the union contract. So, and that's not what we're in right now, but we at least thought this was an opportunity to bring it up to see what people's thoughts are. Meredith, was this um, in, a, in addition to the other holidays or in instead of another holiday? How did that work? No, I believe it was an addition. I, am, I don't think anything was traded off for it. Thank you. Doug? Yeah, um, I, uh, I've been in favor of the Martin Luther King holiday for years. Um, what I would like to say, though, is this, this is out of sync for the town who is still subject to a union negotiation and don't have, and, and it, as I understand it, Mike can probably correct me or not, but I thought that still was open possibility. So I think we're not ready to move forward with this until you know, we know whether that union is going forward or not going forward. We're sort of bidding against ourselves. Uh, philosophically, I'm tremendously in favor of this. Mike? Well, thank you, Doug, for your nice comment. I appreciate that. Uh, I guess the question is, do they already receive the day off uh, as a floater? 
they have two floating holidays and uh, I don't recall offhand if this is one that's normally taken off or, or not. Um, I ask Rosemary if she recalls. Uh, Rosemary, I'm going to ask you to unmute again. Our floating holidays is um, Indigenous Day and um, Battle of Bennington Day. Okay. Okay. And yeah. technically, we don't really have floating holidays because everything's been wrapped up into one pot of CTO. Well, potatoes, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. It, it's a, a similar thing. Uh, you, you're just uh, playing you just a little bit of semantics that. here. Uh, well, but, you know, getting back to Battle of Bennington Day, uh, the battle wasn't even fought in Vermont. Uh, it's, it's only a Vermont holiday. It's not a federal holiday. Uh, and did the, well, I don't really want to get into uh, the villages union negotiation, but you know, that was their deal. Uh, and we might have our own deal coming up. And I agree with uh, what Doug said. Uh, we may or may not be in a negotiation uh, with a union. Uh, we've yet to see a shop steward or meet with a business agent. We've only been going by what we've heard, but we haven't seen anything. Uh, nothing's coming out of their pay for uh, dues or anything of that nature. So we don't really know what we're dealing with. But uh, if we did go ahead and do this today uh, and then next week we have a business agent we've just given away the farm uh, and uh, i agree with doug we don't need to do this uh, you have the village has their deal uh, the town has their deal so but i agree with with uh, doug's statement about martin luther king day i i believe it should be a day off but how we uh, arrive at that will be another story Will? Yeah, so I mean, hearing from two of the select board members, um, I don't know if you actually need a, do, Meredith, do you actually need a motion on this or can we move on to something else or do you want a motion? No, I mean, if we can take it up on our own separately. Um, you know, I thought if we were gonna have something that was a holiday where office staff weren't there, we would probably want it to be consistent yep. because we have shared office staff still, um, but, there's no time limit, you know, it, so we can, we can regroup and figure out if we want to try and do something on our own or wait until the town gets through its yeah. own negotiations and revisit it. You know, there's, so, there's no time limit on it. I'd recommend to Gordy we uh, table it until the time when we have a uh, better grip on it. I think I, I would agree, Will, yeah. as a courtesy for the select board as far as what Mike and Doug said, which is their business, not ours. It sounds like maybe it's the best thing would be to table it so they uh, haven't played their hand and we'll, we can meet again in the future to uh, yep. further discussion if it so deserves. Yep. Um, so this might just be like a function of my age or just unfamiliarity with um, uh, unions and, and how they interact with government. But the, the concern is that these negotiations would come up again in conversations with a union and so we don't want to make any determines before that happens is i just want to make sure i understand well, what, why it makes uh, sense to table it if I could basically explain, it's been, or go ahead gordy if i could explain just on the village side what i was on the bargaining committee with uh there were uh, six of us total from both both sides and there were different recommendations from, from both sides in the negotiations that were put on the table and through the process. Some were accepted, some were taken off the table, and some were given in lieu of something else. So both sides went through the process. Both sides had to give up things. Both sides did receive things, and it's, it's through the negotiation bargaining process. And that's how we came up with this day but there were other concessions, which I don't want to get into because that's a village issue that were within the contract. So it wasn't just a, here you go, people, here's a day off with no strings attached to it. There were concessions and there were uh, vigorous discussions on it. I don't know if that helps the thing or not, but- That does, thank you. 
Anyone else got anything further to speak in on this article? Okay. Uh, next article is the municipal website update. I'm not sure, Brian or Meredith, were you going to provide this? Uh, I can take this one. So the municipal website update, mm. uh, at this point, the two different boards have kind of waited on this to different measures, different degrees. So we wanted to get a little bit more unified position on how we wanted to uh, try and tackle this. Um, so the there's an opportunity to upgrade the website. We can do some of this work with grant, um, but it will be it'll take a decent amount of time and money for it to get completed. Um, our best target for this is to uh, estimate it uh, it is to plan on this for our next fiscal year. Uh, you know, that we'd be investing the time and the money um, a little bit in the future, but start planning for this change kind of now. Uh, and that's, I guess, really what I'm, what we're seeking tonight is, are both boards kind of behind this? We're going to, you know, we know we're going to pay 50% of it. You know, it'll be $1,200, $1,500 uh, one-time service fee for the upgrades, and then hopefully... Uh, management will be kind of no additional cost. It might even get to be a little bit easier to manage. Uh, I know at this point, some of our plugins and things that handle menus and some of the other things on the, our website are a little outdated. Uh, even running the latest updates on them, they're not quite functioning too well. Um, uh, and I know Scott and I had a discussion about this recently that some of the things that we're, we're putting online aren't easy to find online because we need some more upgrades to the website. Um, yeah, this is something we're really interested in, but uh, there, there's very little capacity to actually, you know, do all the review work and everything right this minute. Uh, so I'd like to plan on this for next fiscal year. Sorry, I got kicked off. Um, what, where are we now? So, uh, just ba the, the quick summary, I, I do recommend doing the website update. The Life Board has been generally supportive of it. I wanna get coordination between both boards and their support for it and planning on it for next fiscal year. So we can include it in our upcoming budget that we will spend the money on it. And uh, hopefully this summer we'll have a little bit more uh, available time to make those changes and, and review them. Whose fiscal year are you talking about? Theirs or ours? Because you're talking about joint contribution. I uh, really, I'm thinking ours. But our new our new financial year, they'll also be in a new financial year. You know, on July first, 2021, we'll both be in. You know, new years from today. So basically, the select board felt that the current website is pretty tired and is lacking of some vitally needed updates. Um, Gordy, I don't know what how your board may have never taken this up and talked about it, but that was sort of where the select board came down. I know Meredith has some comments she may want to express on uh, for the village end. I know she's expressed them to me. Yep. Um, no, I definitely agree that um, we didn't budget for it and for the village side through in 2020. So I think it makes a lot of sense for us to, if the both boards, you know, agree with moving forward with the concept to, to plan for it for 2021. Um, more specifically, if we are going to undertake a website update, I would love to see sort of individual pages for our utilities to really call out those functions a little bit more. Um, they're kind of buried under rates and plans. And um, I think there could be a lot better customer service provided if we could just call them out a little bit more and give people more information about their services. Um, so that would be one goal that the village has for a redesign. Um, but that's sort of more detail than I think we're at tonight. I think we're just looking for concurrence from both boards that we should plan to budget for in our next fiscal years. Um, I 
absolutely think this should be a priority, especially uh, with the pandemic and, you know, that probably continuing into next year. And I think more and more people are going to need to interact with the town online in the future. So it's really important, I think. Let's hope less have to interact online. Hopefully we have more people in, in the office. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think I think that yeah, we've we've talked about this for uh, a couple of years now as something that's needed, um, not only for functionality but for economic development. And um, you know, a website really gives a quick snapshot of what the town um, and in this case the village is all about. And we really need to make that very visually appealing and. Um, as well as functional. And to me, it's also wrapped up, not just website, but also just branding in general, branding the town. So if we could incorporate that into our, um, the way we think about this in our budgeting, I think that um, is really, really important. Sounds like it. Is anybody against budgeting for this next year? <laughs> if if, if no one's against it, we can move on to something else. I think we're ready to move on. Right. Okay. Uh, and this one should be a quickie too. The merger study. Yep. So the merger <laughs> study consultant has asked for a list of edits from both the town and village uh, to finalize the study. So I uh, my reading and Meredith and I discussed this a little bit. Our understanding from Kent Gardner is that uh, he's going to make the changes we ask for, but other than that, he's kind of done. You know, uh, we've asked him for a little bit more information on a couple uh, things that were pointed out, and uh, I don't think he's getting back to us with that. I think he's. I think he's been paid. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think at this point, it's, we've got his report, he'll make factual errors that we can all agree to. Uh, and that's kind of all he's interested in. He'll make corrections of the factual errors. Thank you, Doug. Yes, he'll, he'll, <laughs> he'll make corrections of the factual errors. He won't make new ones for us. <laughs> okay, so how do we proceed? I think everybody has seen what he provided for report. Uh, I know Brian shared with the select board some of the town and village uh, comments for corrections. And Brian, um, could you quickly share the two town edits? I've shared with the trustees my list of edits, um, but I know you had two um, that you wanted to add in. Yep. So I've got the share this. So this is to the this is all of the edits town and village that I know are requested. Um, so the two for the town also appear on the villages request list. Uh, they're both pretty straightforward very clear factual errors. Uh, the first one being a misnaming of, uh, you know, it says Vermont Electric Power, it should be Vermont Electric Co-op. On page five, there's uh, an error where one of the tables isn't totaled at the end. And it's totaled in some columns, but not all the columns. So it's pretty clearly that this was a, a an omission. Um, so we've requested that change. These others uh, really get into, you know, for the most part, where we got into uh, requesting more information from Kent, uh, where we wanted to know more about how did Kent arrive at these things that we didn't know, we didn't feel we had enough information to know you know, uh, what was he getting at? Did he total this up? Did he do this in a different strategy than what we would normally use to analyze our budgets? Right. If he used a different strategy, I mean, he's an outside consultant. We brought him in. 
And if he used a different strategy to analyze this, as long as he was consistent application of that strategy, then I don't know that we have a problem with it. Um, and we're just not gonna get any more information out of him about that. And I can say for the village figures, um, so I think you know, Brian's referring to um, on the right-hand side of the screen where there's a chart shown, um, the village specifically asked that the numbers um, in the chart he provided be updated with 2018 actuals. Um, we just couldn't quite figure out the numbers he was using exactly where he pulled them from. They were close, but not quite there. And we, we'd rather go with something that's definite. And we felt like 2018 actual budget, you know, actuals, not budget, but actual figures for expenses for us was the most straightforward. Um, and so you know, the numbers did not change too significantly from what he had in there. And the only other sort of substantive change was we asked for totals for the village and a total for the town to be added, um, just sort of to give a magnitude for each, um, which we thought made sense. Um, but to Brian's point, we don't have a great clarity about how he came up with the other numbers. So, um, but short of getting an explanation from him, at least for the village, we felt more comfortable using figures that we know exactly where they came from. And we know that these numbers are correct. Um, so I don't know, you know, I, I have all the, the lines, um, the rows for the town budget figures blank. And I guess to me, it's an open question of, are we gonna ask him to fill in new numbers for the town or are we gonna go with what he used for the town previously and just ask him to update the village? And do you, to uh, your earlier point of where he's not gonna provide any new information, he'll make factual corrections, would that be considered in his realm of factual corrections or new information? I think if we both agree uh, to make the changes, he'd make them, okay. if we can explain where they came from. <laughs> I'd like to see these corrections made and, and send them into Kent and see if he'll make the corrections. And if he doesn't, we've been over two years now, it's time to poop or get off the pot. And speaking for the trustees, I think they're in agreement with me is that on, the, on our annual meeting in April, we'd like to have a merger vote up or down. And then there'll be all kinds of specifics after that because there's a hundred different types of merger, but we want to get direction from our, from our village voters at our annual meeting. So we've got a lot of homework to do this winter, but I want to see us push this along and it's not fair, so, the, not fair for our village people and it's not fair for the board members. I want to, I want to see something happen and let, let's do it to it. So if he would not be uh, open to making these changes, could we not just submit his report as it came in and we would add an addendum to it with the village and town uh, input on things that we felt were uh, not accurate and go that way. I mean, I, I agree with you, Gordy. This has been kicking around long enough. And uh, unfortunately for us, it would probably be have to be by Australian ballot. We wouldn't even have an opportunity to explain why we have an addendum uh, or we know we'll never even be able to address any questions from the voters because it will be by Australian ballot in this current environment. But you could hold an informational meeting, right? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to say. We can, but nobody goes to them. Oh, well, they sure. would. They will to this one. Everybody's yeah. zooming. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I, I'll just weigh in, Eric. Um, I think. If he's not willing to make the changes to page five that both the town and village agree on that you know the what he has in there for taxes is is just wrong you know that would be sort of to me i don't think we can send that out you know that's right. just completely wrong and it makes the village appear to be nearly twice as expensive as living in the town um i don't think we can send something like that out um so at that at a minimum i say has to be corrected um, and we would very much like these other changes to be made. I think that they improve the accuracy of the report. Um. So uh, I, I, um, he's not too interested in us anymore as well said he's been paid. Um, 
he did the report. We, there are a couple of changes that we agree on that are pretty minimal. Um, I, I'd like to do as, as less suggesting and less changing to the core report, the original report as possible, so that the report is Kent's report. It's an independent thing that's not, not swayed by us one way or the other. We'll each have our opportunity in an addendum or in a, a, a separate document to say, here's the town's findings on this report. Here's the village's findings on this report. Um, but I, I agree, let's, let's just, the stuff that's glaringly, obviously wrong um, that, that we've suggested and agreed to, um, let's make those changes and the rest, um, leave it to, to, a, to a subsequent document. Other comments? <laughs> Just quick, I mean, in, in the correspondence I read today, which I was in the middle of the 400 things, which is probably less than your thousand, Meredith, but um, his request was that the town and the village make the same request. Is that what I've read? Okay, so have you guys, Brian and, and Meredith, you come to a consensus on the questions, the, the, the revisit that uh, you both agree on? Have you sent, have, are you able to send in one request as a combined? Town and village. That's well, kind think... of what we're here to do. And I'm sorry, Meredith, I, I kind of stepped on your toes there, but no, that's okay. Uh, that, that's kind of what we're here to do is come to an agreement on what are the changes that both the, the select board and the trustees agree to. From the village standpoint, um, prior to Will, Athena, and um, Steve joining the board, we had a you know, sit down conversation amongst the trustees and the changes that I've listed are the changes that the village, you know, as a group with the trustees discuss wanting to have made that we think makes the report accurate. Um, you know, so I think we feel pretty committed that we would like to see the changes that are listed here made. Um, but as I mentioned, I'm not sure with the town dollar figures for that chart, um, if you just want to use what Kent has in there currently, then we won't ask him to change them. We would just ask him to add a total for the town. Um, and we would just ask him to change ours to categorize them the way we would like them using 2018 actuals. Um, if you guys are comfortable using the figures he already has in there, then we can send it as is and just say, leave the town figures alone, make these changes to the village figures and hopefully he'll do it. Um, well, uh, I mean, I, I think the changes that that we that you've spoken about, Meredith, um, should be on the list. Is there any opposition to that from any of the, any of the select board? No, I can't read the list right now because of the sizing. We'll zoom in. Uh, so it really starts with. Everything on page three and page five, we're in agreement on. Mm -hmm. uh, so it, it's really page six, uh, 11, 12, and I th I'm missing some, but. Uh. Yep, so, you know, most of it has to do with this chart um, that we've asked for it to be reorganized a little bit um, in the way that makes sense for how our village operates. So fire department sort of called out separately, water, wastewater, electric, and then everything else is general admin. Um, and his totals were close, they just were slightly off. And th again, this be clear, and we'd like it stated, this is using 2018 actual expenses for the village. Um, then we've added that total, asked that totals be added for the village and town. So just summing up you know, our total expenses individually. And then Brian, can you scroll to the next? Yep. Um, and then the last three are the only things that we're really asking that are not really numbers based. Um, so uh, we asked for a slight change to a sentence related to um, the allocation of our line worker, um, salaries to the general department. Um, I don't think that was clearly 
communicated and we thought if we're talking about expenses being borne by the general department, we should include what percentage of those salaries and benefits are being paid for by the general department. Um, the second one, the uh, number five on page 12, uh, it was a sort of request to not be so uh, maybe harsh um, and just say that we would need to evaluate staffing or re-examine it versus saying it absolutely would have to be reduced. Um, and then there was a comment on page 12 that was just very confusing when we read it um, and we were suggesting a rewording of it um, because we just didn't think it was clear. I guess uh, maybe it's thrown over to the select board now because the trustees have already, uh, this is something they've come up with, they feel comfortable with. Is there any uh, concern from select board members on not supporting any of these items? Yeah, and I, and I understand item number five uh, in the concern for morale. I, I wanna be sensitive to that, but this is also Kent's report. Um, and we have the opportunity to, um, as individual boards, to make our own comment or as individual citizens to make our own comments about it, to, to, to poke holes in it. Um, but let his report sort of stand as it's written and not um, try and uh, change the tone of the, of the, um, what he's, what he's saying. Yeah, I agree. I mean, this was the whole point of getting a third party to come in and give us his assessment. Um, this is what this is what we're paying for. Um, so, yeah, I'm not. I don't. I personally don't feel comfortable changing um, yeah, changing language or things that aren't about you know. Um, facts. My question is on number four. Um, what does the, the second to the last sentence uh, say on page 11 right now that you want to change? Let me see if I can pull it up, Doug. Thank you. All right. Um... It just says, well, I'll, I'll read the sentence before it. <laughs> so so um, it says the average salary and benefits for the current town highway department workers, excluding the supervisor is about 65,000. Comparable figure for the electric department worker is about 106,000. Both departments are reported to do excellent work. Um, and so we were wanting to call out that only 20% of that is actually going towards um, general department duties versus sort of the way to us it read is that to do the exact same job, it costs $41,000 more. And we were trying to point out that when we're comparing similar work, only 20% of that is borne by the general department. Is that not something that you could speak to either in a uh, an informational meeting or as a attach a village addendum to the report? Nope, we could. Um, we just thought that it didn't provide a clear explanation of the situation. And we were trying to make the report, you know, as clear as possible, but we can, we, and we certainly will. Um, there are plenty of other things in the report that we think should be, um, you know, we could add to. Um, and so, you know, that is something we can do. How about how about number six? Um, the text on the parcels per resident was confusing. Do you yep. know what that is? Yep. Um, so I think that this is the one we were talking about. Um, says for assets not effectively owned by ratepayers, the nature of any compensation is complicated by the fact that the merged town will include current village residents who comprise 43% of the population, 28% of tax parcels and 27% of assessed value. The village residents and taxpayers are on both sides of any proposed transaction. Um, and so he's getting at, you know, if we were gonna have to dispose of village assets because of a merger, it's, 
complicated. <laughs> and I just, the way it was written, it just, it didn't seem, it, it just seemed like you could summarize it more clearly to say the disposition of assets is, um, you know, going to be complicated because ownership by the ratepayers does not follow municipal boundaries. Um, we have ratepayers who paid for assets that aren't the same as village residents no. or town residents. Um, so, so for instance, I'm a rate payer for my electric and water and sewer, but I'm a town resident. Is that is that what the distinctions are? I think he's saying so. Um, say there's an asset that was purchased by the electric department and the electric department serves town residents. Um, if people were gonna, if the electric department was gonna get paid back or the village was gonna get paid back for the disposition of those assets, it would go to village residents, not all of the village rate payers. So the people who live outside the village but have paid rates would not be, potentially could not be compensated for the disposition of assets. I'm giving that as a broad example, but um, just that it's a complicated to figure out how you would dispose of assets. And if you were going to pay people back, how you would do it in a fair way, because it doesn't follow municipal boundaries. Okay, thank you. Um, my take on four, five, and six is, is that um, the, I think they should stay as they are um, because I, I think on number four, there, there it's, you know, alignment is not the same thing as a, uh, as a person driving a truck. Alignment is, is a higher paid worker. I think wanting to know what the village is paying for their higher skilled, higher paid workers is, is, is reasonable to know. And the, the allocation from the general to the electrical is, is, is you know, it might be useful, but certainly could be added. Um, the page five, page, page five, uh, no, shoot, number five on page 12, I think that, that, that that's a massaging, to change that would be to massage his conclusion. And I think his conclusion is his own. Uh, the, the significance to the municipality, the village of the, electrical department is something that I think that uh, that you folks are more than able to defend and, and present to the, to the village uh, residents. Okay, from what I'm sensing coming all the way down through this document, the select board had no problem with any of the proposed changes of the trustees down through and including the chart at the top of this page, it was only the last three items uh, I heard from three members of the board who had reservations. Mr. Chairman, Mike, uh, the I think the the whole deal here is to to correct uh, blatant errors. And uh, a while back, when Meredith was talking about the the perceived amount of wages uh, in excess of $40,000 was not really clear. Uh, and it gave the impression that their employees were overpaid, uh, if you can correct me, for doing manual labor and, and all of this other stuff. Um, I believe that should be corrected. You, you seem to think that uh, that could be an addendum, uh, but I believe that is a a very egregious error, and it should be corrected on this document. Which area are you exactly referring to? The one that you were talking to Meredith about, uh, the in excess of $40,000. I, I wish I could have jumped right in, but Doug had a couple of follow-ups on that, and I didn't get it right in when you were actually talking about it. You remember what I was talking about, right, Meredith? Yeah, he's referring to number four on page 11. That okay. okay. So I'm hearing Mike does support uh, changing the language, but I heard from Nat, Kyle, and Doug against changing any of the language of all three of them. Well, that's an egregious error, uh, Eric, uh, and that's what we're trying to correct, aren't we? 
that's what we're here to, to discuss. But well, then I it should be corrected. Number four should be corrected. You know, we rule by a majority. And I understand. I, Maybe they didn't uh, quite get the whole gist of it. Have I, has Mike changed any minds between the three that can uh, express reservations? Do no, not appear. I, I think the village's point uh, is, is a meaningful one, but that can be made in, a, in, a, in an addendum. Well, an addendum is not really sometimes a good way to do it because sometimes people don't really uh, check out an addendum. They, they see the finished product and sometimes they're taking uh, this first document as book, chapter and verse and, and might not really get into the weeds as you always say, Eric. Well, I, th I think anybody voting on this should absolutely read the, the trustees take on it and the, and the select board's take on it. I, be seem I, I agree with you 100% that, but unfortunately, there's not really going to be that many people. I think a lot of people have got in their own head uh, what they're going to do before the get-go here, and, and they're going to vote one way or another, no matter what facts or figures they see. What but, is, Michael, what's wrong? What's egregious? What's wrong about the statement that, that they're, they receive $40,000 more? Well, the way that Meredith put it, it, it gives the impression that the village employees are way overpaid. It doesn't put into uh, perspective their, their line capabilities. Correct, Meredith? Right. We were trying to call out of what they're paid, how much of it is going to do similar functions. Um, and we thought by including adding in just that of which the general apartment is allocated 20% made it much more clear and um, would prevent people from being confused. Um, okay, well, misunderstanding. You, you, can, you guys can do whatever you want to do with this document. Just leave in the line that says that there's no appreciable savings to the town or the village. That, that kind of puts the whole thing in a nutshell. I'm, I don't mean to divert from the topic. I am interested in, um, in the process moving forward after this is released. Um, um, the village, Gordy, you indicated that you, you'd like to put, a, put this on the village meeting. In my mind, village vote would go first because if the village votes it down, it's totally moot for the town. Um, but I don't know that I'm thinking about that properly. And of course, town meeting comes before village meeting. So would, would it be advisable for the town to put this on the town meeting agenda, I guess is what I would wanna know from, I would want some input on that from the trustees. Personally, I think it should go on both agendas, both, both meetings. If one negates the other one, then it's, then it's a mute issue. But if we don't have it up, then we only have the vote for, from one side. So we'd have to go on, on both both meetings. That would be my personal thought. Right. I, I guess I was thinking if, if it does pass the village and it wasn't in a town meeting, then it would be a special meeting. But um, there's no, it's no problem for me if we put it on the town meeting. Mike? We actually talked about that. Last meeting, as I recall, and I made the suggestion that we put the vote in with the same mailing and when there was a little bit of pushback on that. Uh, but mm -hmm. I still agree that this should go out. Uh, I actually wish it would say this whole document would say a little bit more about how it's going to be at least a minimum of $200,000 increase to the town if this should happen to go through as a positive for a merger town and village. I mean, the town is gonna to have to come up with basically a quarter of a million dollars from the get-go. And nowhere in this document does it actually say that. So, you know, we have a flawed document. There's no question about it. But it's the only document we have and we have to go with it. Uh, let the chips fall where they may. Uh, correct all we can and put an addendum to the town and village and. 
see where it goes. Doug? Well, looking at the report, um, the it seems to me that this report is a, a general overview and doesn't get down into the weeds at all as far as cost, like Mike is talking about. Um, and the and it doesn't go into some practical things. I, I'm wondering what question we would put up. I think that I think if you're going to have a vote, you might want to know, you know, how you deal with the fire department, how you deal with uh, the stranded cost for for uh, the different municipal things like sidewalks and and things that we we might have to have, might have to assume and pay for that would fall on on the town we can look at uh, and of course the town includes the village so that you know um we, we really need to know the dollars and cents of this and you know if 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 the municipality the town and the village both voted on for merger and the electric department came with it it would absolutely overwhelm as it you are the village is 99 percent utility the town just does not have the capacity on the select board to handle this type of uh, of a duty and uh you know so i would be very very hesitant you know if i was sitting on the board to to have a merger that brought with it the electrical department or you know i would want to see these things decision made that these things were run by commissioners, you know, and not by the, not by the select board. I think the intent of this document was to put a question out there on it, whether it makes sense or not. And this vote before the town and village would not be a vote of shall the town and village merge. It would be a vote of shall the town and village start exploring it. And that was the intent of this. So some of that uh, specific information that your, yourself, Doug and, and Mike are talking about, we wouldn't expect that level of detail. That would be if the town felt there was enough positive 30,000 foot uh, benefit from merging or enough reason not to merge, this would just die or mm -hmm. it would go forward. And that, that was how simple it was supposed to be as far as going to the voters on this go around. If the voters, and it takes two to tango, if both the town and village voters voted in favor of a merger after seeing this, exploring a merger after they see this document, we would then go into all the nitty gritties and come back to the voters with a vote on shall the town and village merge. And then, of course, it goes to legislature and all that. Yeah, Mike, the reason I brought this up is we, we were talking about, well, we'll put a vote on merger. If we put a vote on exploring a merger, that's a whole different question than let's merge. That was completely my understanding of what the next step at town and village meeting was going to be. Let's do explore. exploration, not a yes or no in terms of merging. Mike? Probably uh, in high, 2020 hindsight and in retrospect, if we'd had a cost analysis done, all of these figures before us, then it could definitively been either voted up or down. Uh, let's say that uh, both town and village want to continue this, then it's going to cost us between 30 or $40,000 for that full study. And then we're going to go back to kind of square one again and take another three or four or five, 10 years to get to the bottom of that. I and think I would, how long it takes for most communities to figure this out. <laughs> I, right. And he, he alluded to that fact himself when he talked to us, as you recall. Is that your understanding as well? You talking to me, Eric? No, I was talking to... I was talking to Gordy, if this was the, your understanding as well, that this would go before your voters on shall we uh, continue exploration of a merger? I think so, but hindsight 2020, I wish we'd gone with that $6,000 merger 
he was just going to do a pure numbers game, cost and yeah. benefits for both town and village. And we would have had a lot of these numbers done instead of paying 10,000 for this report. Because that's what that other fellow was going to do was just, he's just going to give the dollars on different budgets and so forth. But that's water over the dam. But we can hit, we can go with a vote because there's a hundred different kinds of mergers. You could we could say as village, you guys take over the general department. You take the sidewalks. You take the crosswalks. You take all the sewers, storm sewers. You take all our property. You take Cold Spring. You take uh, the Village Green. You argue about the Black Lives flag instead of us. You talk <laughs> about uh, all kinds of other things that uh, on the general department. But as far as the other three, I will fight for uh, as long as I can for the three utilities to stay stay the way they are and be under village control but i'm only one person in this community but that's a long shot to your question eric but yeah we and should. the fire department too right eric i mean uh, Cordy. yes yeah so probably the right thing eric is just looking at uh i can't remember what the motion the article is for town and village but it was to try to see whether proceed or not and get some ideas on a merger and we've got to report whether we like all of it or not and, we already your your audio cut out and now it looks like you froze okay i think you're back possibilities. Uh, we lost you completely gordy for all of that no <laughs> no not every bit of it yeah oh no <laughs> or I lost it, I guess. You didn't uh, hear about him. They wanted to keep the three major departments. Yes, yes, I heard that. You heard yeah. all of that. So yeah. you got you got the whole gist. Well, so, I don't know. I kept seeing his lips move. Oh, his maybe he was saying something else. <laughs> no, there's, there's he was a, calling me a name. That's what it was. There's a hundred different types of mergers, and we have to. That'll be after the meeting. But I agree with you, Eric. You can hear me that. We just got to decide whether you have a merger to proceed, and then we've got to report for for whatever it is, and then it's going to take a lot more studies and more consultants and lawyers to uh, proceed. But that's down the road. Well, I <clears throat> I agree with what Will said. We put it before both the town and village, and uh, if either one of us, our voters, uh, vote it down, then it's a dead issue. Yeah. So uh, just to move this one forward, Eric and Gordy, it seems like Meredith and Brian need uh, a direction from both boards. Do we just have them move forward with a request for just the factual number things? Or do we, uh, it sounds like the select board is not interested in, well, Mike is on one of them, but in general, Eric, would you say your consensus is not to move forward with the uh, page 11, 12 and just stick with the stick with the changes in the factual thing so we can get this document finished for whatever it is. Yeah, that was the consensus that I received from, or got from the select board is everything down to the last uh, bullet, uh, three bullet items that we were in agreement with. So I guess that would be the direction to uh, Brian and Meredith to feed that back to um, what's his name? Kent. Uh, Kent. 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 And then uh, we could get a final report and then both of us could be, I mean, we would need that final report by January so we can put it out in our town report and yep. get it voted on. Uh, point of, of clarification, I, I'm i not, I'd like the board to weigh in on the changes on page six, if we're okay with them or not. Uh, a little bit of explanation and Meredith, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think his numbers were not what you had for the way you would calculate 2018 actual expenses. But I, I, if I recall the discussion, you're not sure how he arrived at the numbers he arrived at. That he used some other method to calculate that. Some other method or he just got them wrong. I don't know. Yeah. And, yeah. and we don't know either. Uh, and that was something that but I don't think, I don't have any sense that making these corrections will in any way change any of his conclusions. I, I think it's, you know, I just, I think this is the accurate way to display our 2018 actual expenses if you want to break it down by department. Um, you know, I, I really, I mean, if he wants to come back and say, 
I can't do this because it completely changes something else, then he can give us that feedback. But until he tells us that, I, I think that this is pretty clear. I mean, they're, they're actual numbers. I'm fine with that. This is the one I really wanted more information from him. But if we're comfortable making the change, then we'll, we'll go ahead. Is there anyone not comfortable? Let's um, just get this over with. Gordy, if you're ready, then we should, uh, and then we have no further board members that want to speak to this. I would look to Brian on any public members that would like to speak. I have a, I have a question. Go ahead, Nat. Um, if the trustees, and we I, obviously, I, I don't imagine you've discussed this, but if either board uh, plans to make a recommendation to the voters in advance of the, of the vote. I'm not sure if it, that's been brought up at the select board level, whether we would have an endorsement of, for, or against. And I'm not sure if the trustees have had that either. I've talked about it some, but I don't know how the other four feel. So I guess I'd have to ask the other four. I, I feel we shouldn't just hang it out there and just say, here it is, people. I think that's just something I think the village people and trustees, I think we should be fighting for keeping our form of government and keeping our utilities basically the way they are. But that that's just my opinion and whatever the other four think, well, I respect. Mike? I think in the beginning that we hired this outside consultant uh, so that it would appear as if we didn't have our fingers in this pie and uh, also that uh, what goes along with that is uh, hands off with no endorsements one way or another. But if uh, the consensus is uh, to endorse it one way or another, uh, as most people know, I have an opinion and uh, I would be more than happy to give it if people ask me about it. I guess the question is, since it's a joint meeting, if if one side, one board feels that we should be completely hands off and would be terribly upset or offended or take terrible umbrage if the other board were to take a motion one way or the other, maybe I should just forget I even brought it up because it sounds like it's not uh, not an issue. Personally, I'm with Mike. I, I don't think the board should endorse or or not endorse the, uh, that, but on, uh, on a personal level, if someone comes to me and asks my opinion, I will, I will give it, but not, not speaking for the board. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. I don't, I think it makes sense to just present the information um, to the voters and let them decide it's democracy, right? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Might I speak? Yeah, go ahead, Doug. I, I expect that if you're we're at town meeting, the first question on this issue will be, what does the board think? Hmm. So luck, luckily this year, we will not have a town meeting, I do not believe, and it'll be by Australian ballot. And do you think we'll have discussion by Zoom? Or we'll probably have an informational meeting. Yeah, and then I would expect it there. Board. Yeah. What does the board think? The board has taken no uh, no official position as individuals we might have. Yeah, that would be the position of the board. If the board decides that, we will have no official position. I think that's a terrible uh, you know, decision and an abdication of our responsibility. I don't know what uh, I don't know what should come out of this. I, I, if you're going to give an answer like that. I think that, that it would be something more along Gordy's line that we've got a hundred different possibilities of what this would be and one wouldn't know what to choose until you see the possibilities presented to yourself. You know, uh, rather than, you know, some sort of an explanation as to why we're not offering because, you know, it's, it's like having a hundred tax plans in front of you and which one is good for the country or good for the, the town or good for the state. Eric? Yes, Mike? The board might not have a position, but individual board members have 
a position. And if an individual board member was asked a question by a taxpayer, it's the responsibility of that board member to give a truthful answer. Uh, so, I mean, I can remember Paul Bradley jumping on Jim Gillen one time and said, what do you, what do you think, Jim? And Jim wouldn't say a word. He just got red in the face and started blinking his eyes. And then Paul said, quit blinking your eyes, Jim, and tell me what you think. <laughs> and then he told him what he thought about it. So it's our responsibility as select board members, if anybody of the community asks <laughs> us the question, we have to give them a truthful answer and how we feel about it, period. As an individual. Exactly. Yeah. When you're elected and if the question gets presented to the board, do you think the board has a responsibility for analyzing the question and presenting a board's position? Possibly, but we could all give our own position. We could do that without being elected. That's true. I kind of agree with you both ways on, on that, uh, Doug. Probably the board should have a position. Well, Gordy, I'm not getting a strong sense here right now whether no. our the select board will have a position or not. Uh, and I'm sure your board's in the same place. Uh, is there any other board members that would like to speak to this or shall we open it to the public? Is there any one, Brian, that would? Yeah, um, I have two. <clears throat> One's a little bit, a little bit of you to this. And Doug, where are you? There you are. I see you. Um, your comment on the select board being overwhelmed by taking over the village trustees' workload. We joke about the same thing: taking over the select board's workload if we merge. Good. I just want to throw that out. Yeah, that's an argument for you know what. But the town would be over the village. Well, you never know when we merge. It could go any way. Just saying. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, okay. So on, on, the, on, on a more serious note, <clears throat> the proposal uh, for corrections that Meredith has come up with, item four on page 11, um, that's a deal breaker for me. I don't want to see that removed. I think it's really important that that be fixed. I, I think it's a, uh, I think it's an error. And um, I'm not willing to budge on that one. Well, um, unfortunately, uh, Scott, it takes the both boards to agree before this could go forward and, and, uh, What's his name? I never remember his name. We'll make Ken. It Ken. Yep. before Ken will make the changes. Right. But I'm and just I, saying I, I want that submitted to Ken for correction. And I, I think that's what I'm looking for is support from both boards to get that moved through because I, I think it's a, I think it's a drastic error um, on the document. I think your Various board has already various trustees at this point. So I, I'm just letting people know where I stand on it. Okay, so noted. I think I was the only board member on the select board that wanted to change number four, correct? Yep. yep, yes. And I don't understand why you don't want to change it. It presents the perception that uh, the guys, that our guys are getting paid twice as much as you guys are and, and the way the wages are being separated between the other th three departments, it's, that's totally misleading for anybody that doesn't understand how the budgeting works. And it sets a village in a bad light. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I go back to if there's no further board comments, board members, is there, Brian, is there anybody from the public? All right. If there's anybody from the public, please raise your hand. Uh, and I'll call on you. Hey. Brian, do you think we could go back to the um, Brady Bunch view? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're not old enough to know the Brady Bunch. <laughs> <laughs> it reruns. Reruns. <laughs> Me TV. 
I would say we didn't have cable, so I don't know if that means anything. <laughs> All right, I'm not seeing any public comment on this. Okay, so I guess you and Meredith got your marching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the paid minute taker for the Racial Justice Committee. And I was not at the last select board meeting, but as I understand it, the select board did vote in favor of it, uh, providing a meeting minute taker uh, for the Racial Justice Committee. Am I correct, Doug? You know, since I was running the meeting, I don't remember that part. I, rem I remember the racial, I don't remember how we voted, you know. Three to one. <laughs> in favor. Well, I, I voted in, in favor of a minute taker, that's right. Okay. okay. And so as in other items that for the joint uh, boards, it takes two to tango. Um, and this was contingent upon the trustees. How do the trustees uh, feel? I, I think it makes sense um, in a way for folks to like know what's happening um, at these committees for folks to read later, for folks to go back and reference. I think it makes sense. Yeah, I'd like to make a motion um, to have this uh, uh, a paid note taker for this committee um, and also include the two meetings that have occurred um, beforehand, that those notes also be taken off the Zoom meeting and posted on the town webpage. Um, so that's my motion. I'll second. I'll second that. The motion is second. Ready for discussion from the trustees? Uh, uh, before I approve anything, I'd like to know what dollars are involved. So. Do we have a number for but a note taker is paid? Brian, is it currently twenty dollars an hour for Donna? Well, we do have Donna on the meeting right now, so if Donna's willing to uh, present, give that figure to us, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, it's um, twenty dollars an hour, and that's for meeting time and also any time I spend working on the minutes after the meeting and typically however long the meeting is working on them afterwards takes roughly the same amount of time so if it was a two hour meeting you'd end up paying me roughly for four hours so a two hour meeting then would be about eighty dollars and how how many meetings do they have scheduled or is there are they meeting once a month once a week they are scheduled for um, a future meeting once a month. Uh, they might have some work sessions and other things, but the, the scheduled meetings are once a month. And the scheduled meetings are the only ones they're worried about minutes on? Not the workshop? That would be a condition that we could set that you know we're going to pay for meeting minutes for regular meetings and if you're going to have a special meeting you've got to you know figure something out Is that okay with you scott yeah totally it, one thing i'd like to add just to control the uh dollar amount because this is and you've alluded to it will is this, we would only allow one pay for one meeting a month because this is kind of open-ended what if they have two or three meetings a month there's no way to uh control the spending and yet I believe the minutes should be posted, but on the flip side, all the other committees in their town or village are going to now they're going to want to come in and say we want to have Donna take all the minutes. So this is going to be not careful could really blow everything wide open, open up a Pandora's box. But yeah. but on the flip, like I said before, whatever the meetings are and what they say, they watch us closely. So it's only fair that they they also get watched what they say and who says what. And I want to make sure that. Who, I want to know who attends the meetings, not just the six people. I want to know, I want to make sure that the, the, the committee of six are, are functioning well and without a lot of interference, that's, that's not positive. That's my viewpoint. Does any other trustees have any comments before you vote? Or yeah, before I mean, you vote two, 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 hours, two hours a month is pushing a thousand bucks a year, just to put a number to it. And if the meetings go as long as some of ours have, you could be looking at a couple thousand bucks a year. So that's, a, that's the number we're looking at. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I just we need to know numbers before we vote yay or nay. 
If I, that's going to be just general fund, I assume, Meredith, right? If, if that is, that's uh, our budget's about 112000 a year. So we're already at uh, an, adding another 1000 at least to it then. We're going to have 1% to 2% increase. Yeah. All right. But don't forget this is a shared cost with the town who's already voted in favor for it. Okay. Yeah. 50 /50. Yeah. I've been to the last two meetings and they've only been a little over an hour long each, just so you know. They're not four hours, five hours. Yeah. So Scott, in your motion, can you can you set a limit of you know one meeting not to exceed or at least one meeting a month, one official meeting if they want, you know, that that will limit the uh, the note taker portion of it so they can get all their agenda items in one meeting per month so they don't have two or three or four or I mean, I'm trying to be consistent with what the town approved, and I don't think they put a limit on meetings and time. Well, we got them all here now. We can revote it, right? Uh, we wouldn't necessarily need to revote it. If you can, sorry to interject here. Yeah. Um, one of the specifications from the town was also that we were going to do some investigation on this about possibly using a transcription service or possibly using a different cheaper minute taker um and that's not really decided yet it, it looks like we're leaning away from transcription service that that's been the general request i've had from the boards that i've talked to is, is that they would you know if we start if we started with a transcription service they wouldn't use it that they think that that's not helpful uh and would take nearly as much volunteer time to uh to fix if we had so the transcription service would kind of be a waste of money um and the a different minute taker is something that we're still pursuing i would like to just add that in the past sometimes when we've had to try to find a meeting minute taker uh there's not many of them out there and there's far fewer that are are good at it. We are very, very fortunate to have Donna. I think she does a very good job. Yes, and uh, I, absolutely. That uh, I said it at our last meeting, and I'm happy, more than happy, to say it again. That I really view Donna's meetings as kind of the gold standard of that. That's the absolute best we can do, and we are served extraordinarily well uh, by that. Well, while we're not advocating to give her a pay raise, <laughs> I, I am going to ask, is Donna even interested in uh, providing meeting minutes taking for this committee? Or do we have to start searching for someone too? Yeah, I guess I'm, I'm interested in concept. I, I don't know what night they meet and if it conflicts with other meetings I have. Right now, if meetings are being recorded on Zoom, you know, I can work from that just about as well as if I was there. So even if it's a night where I have a conflict, it, that wouldn't necessarily be a huge problem. Um, I guess it partly depends on whether it's important for them, for me to be there in person or not. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say I'm interested. Do any of the board members on either committee or, you know, the trustees or the select board even have a, an idea of when the meetings are? Yeah. Please fill us in, because I haven't been able to find it. Okay. Well, I'm not. I'm not on the committee, but I've been to the committee meetings so far. There's been two. How does one know that? The dates. I looked it up on the website. Really. Mm -hmm. Where? Because I looked for it and I couldn't find it. Um, look over committees. If you look go, agenda, you, agendas I mean, and meetings and committees, there is no mention. Okay. Well, I went into this into the I think I just quickly went into the search bar and put in racial justice committee and it came right up. Okay. So you had to search it. So it, I think it would be more beneficial for folks who really want to attend to have that under agendas and meetings and committees. We have links that everybody else uses. Um, it, it just requires a little bit of digging that apparently I didn't know about either. So anyway, when are the meetings? Brian, is it the second or the third Thursday at six o'clock? 
I think it's the. I think it's the, it's it might even be the first. Um, okay, it's a Thursday. I know that. Yeah, Rick Opperly is here. So, with your permission, I can unmute him uh, to answer the question. Uh, he he is their board chair. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm. Yeah, Thursday, six o'clock, but I don't recall uh, for certain whether it's first or second. Are we okay with uh, Rick I think, Jas answering? I think Jasmine gave us a one for the first. But if Rick's available, we can unmute him. Okay, Rick. Hi. Um, yes, thank you for... Um, checking in. It is the first Thursday we met on November 5th. It was an informal and an informational meeting. It, I don't believe it was warned as a full meeting. It was to pursue electing officers and to set rules of procedure according to Vermont League of Cities and Towns. It is the first Thursday of every month. And then there was a request that came from Meredith that we hold a special meeting and we had to do that. And we did that on the 19th. That meeting was duly warned both with a posting at the post office and the public library and the municipal building. None of this has gone to the general public. And as far as when I look at the town and village website, nothing has been posted on there. And part of that might be my own challenges around technology. I don't really know how I, as the chairperson, would put that on the website. So I'm looking for help with that as well. And when the time comes, I would also like to speak to uh, the motion about the minute taker. So All I'll right. be quiet now. Thank you, Rick. I'll have you back up uh, when we get to that part of the discussion. Um, a quick note about the town website. It, it's a technical problem that new committees are not showing up where they're supposed to be. I think we may have reached a limit for the number of things that we can have in a menu item. So. It, it's on the website, but it's not any place where most people would be able to find it. Like Kyle said, she searched for it and it came up. It, it's a technical problem that we're working to resolve. Uh, they, they will go in with the regular agendas and committees. And can I just add, I've never requested a, the committee have a special meeting. I, I, I don't know where that's coming from. <laughs> I never made that request. No, it, it was... And, and, and that Meredith is right. There was a, a discussion about that, that first informational meeting that it wasn't properly warned. Uh, and so when we had a properly warned meeting, we should, that committee should reaffirm decisions made at an improperly warned meeting. Right. And it wasn't a request by Meredith to do something in particular but Meredith was part of that discussion that the right thing to do is to have a, uh, is to make decisions at a properly warned meeting. Thank you. Scott, could you redo the, the motion? And I think Athena seconded it and then we can see if Gordy wants to call the question or open it up to public or whatever. <clears throat> So a uh, question of order, do I have to rescind my You can motion? amend it and then Athena can reset or can second the amendment. So do you want me to rescind it and people vote on it? You can make a friendly amendment. Yeah, if, if you make an amendment saying it, that for one meeting a month, okay. and then Athena seconded it and she says she's it's okay with that I amendment. I believe I was the one that seconded it. I think it might have been Steve. I think we raised our hand at the same time, oh. so I don't know what's on the on the minutes, but yeah, take it. Okay, uh, so <clears throat> I will make that amendment for one meeting per month, 
Um, and I'm not putting a time cap on it. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. We got a motion and a second. Now do you want to open up for? We lost you, Gordy. I think right. he was asking about opening it up for public comment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so with the select board, I think that our, I think that this fits under our direction. So I don't think we need a separate motion. Uh, mm -hmm. I, do does the select board feel differently, or are we ready to open it up for public comment? I think we're good. Okay. Well, I don't think we had any limitation on that. Uh, I'd like to hear what Rick Offerly has to say from the committee's point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't think we had any limitation on it either. Yeah. Um, well, this is still the village vote, so whether. Yeah. Right. I understand that you have your. All right. Then, if we're ready for the public, uh, Rick, I've got you up first. So go ahead and unmute. Okay. Thank you for unmuting me. Um, yeah, I'd like to speak to this, um, and I'd like to use the same language that I used when I spoke with the select board last week. Again, I just want to put things in perspective. Today is November 23rd. That means it's been 18 days since this committee met, and it's, uh, how to say it, it's, it's a long-term process. Um, but what I would like to say is that I would like to see uh, congruence as much as possible with the League of Cities and Towns open meeting requirements. Yeah. So I support a transparent, objective, and impartial assessment and transcription of the Racial Justice Committee meetings. The committee did agree that, that we should have this. And I would really... Um, I agree with Brian that I have been very impressed with Donna's minute taking. And I just think if the committee comes up with someone or we have a volunteer, uh, we run into uh, questions of uh, maybe not being objective enough. So I'd like to stay with the standard that both boards, since this it, committee was an appointment of both boards, I would like to, and if Donna is willing to do it, and it sounds like she is, um, I would really like to see uh, her level of expertise be applied to this critical, critical uh, committee uh, that, is so important that both boards felt it was necessary to create it in the first place. So um, that being said, that's my support of that part. As far as the dollars and cents, uh, we're, uh, I believe I looked at the calendar today, we're about a hundred days away from town meeting. And that means maybe 130 days or so from a village meeting. And I think as far as like the slippery slope of other committees maybe jumping on, piling on, I think that the board could look at this not as an either or type decision, but maybe a both and type of a decision where you take it on a case by case basis and to get to the dollars and cents of this, um, since it's a shared expense and as was pointed out before, I think our first meeting was a little under an hour. And I believe the second one might have run a little over an hour, but we had, um, we passed a mission statement and we also have a draft of a vision statement. And of course we had the other housekeeping matters to tend to. Um, but so it's an hour. And Donna said an hour of Zoom 20, an hour to do the uh, minute taking, and I'm, I'm not holding her to this, but I'm saying that's $40 um, shared by both boards. Uh, that's 20 bucks. And I think between now and maybe both annual meetings, town and village, uh, we can figure out where to come up with the money. 
I just think this is way too important. I think there are, are a lot of people who want to be heard and want also to be able to have a coherent and inclusive assessment and transcription of what this committee is trying to present. You've given us some, some five points that we need to ponder and each one of those um, requires a level of specificity. And I just, I, I can't say enough um, uh, praiseworthy of, um, I'm a student of Donna's minutes and I quote them at meetings as people probably have heard. And I just went back to them uh, to speak to this. So again, um, it's not gonna be thousands and thousands of dollars that this committee is looking for. We're looking for maybe hundreds of dollars. And if that helps, um, that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. And I've also got uh, Jasmine. Yeah. <clears throat> we're, it's a village vote, I think we're doing. So it's village participants, to the best of my knowledge on this. If the village this is just voting, um, I guess I'm looking for direction. If the if trustees the are too cheap, I'll pay for it myself. <laughs> I'm ready to vote. Well, okay. we, we, we have a member of the public who'd like to speak who is not a village resident. If it's not, if it's for a village vote, uh, unless, the, unless you four trustees want to overrule me, you can. I'm going to keep it as a village. Village think, business is village business. I think Rick gave a very good explanation on, on behalf of the committee. Can I ask Will why you just walked away from the camera the entire time Rick was speaking? No. <laughs> that just seemed really rude and you didn't hear any of the public comment of the people I that- heard, you heard. I heard everything he said. Ready for the vote? And now we're starting to get personal here. We don't no, need to. It's just courtesy. All those in favor of the, of the amendment, please signify with an aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous. All those in favor of the motion, please signify with an aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous. Motion passes. Now, Eric, are we on? Any other business? Yes. I, I, I'd like to just identify uh, Greg Tachel's online. And for those of you who may or may not know, He's uh, signed a purchase and sales agreement for Parker and Stern. So really hoping wow. for good things out of that. Uh, and I believe Nat oh, wanted to talk to uh, yeah. our building concerns. Yeah, but, if I can just put a, a plug in, we've got um, obviously a, a good amount of um, jointly owned property, and, uh, including the cold storage building, which I, I think has some moisture issues if I'm not mistaken. Um, the, um, the mill house, which is in really uh, sad condition. Um, and the longer we don't put money into it, the longer we don't do anything with it, the worse it's gonna be and the more expensive it's gonna be. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking that at some future date, not too long down the line, we, we have a meeting to discuss jointly owned properties. And I understand that's complicated by, some, by the village garage issue, but, um, but I don't think that should um, hold us up too much from, from talking about those other issues. Um, I'd also just like to put a plug in. I will be talking to the village and town um, separately since it wasn't worn tonight. Um, the mill house has a need because there's a food shelf in there and they're getting a lot more traffic. Um, and it's our building. They have a they have a request for a uh, handicap accessible ramp. If we could please fund that, um, it should be something less than two thousand dollars. But um, I'll try and get more information about that in a, in a more pre precise dollar figure. Um, so just putting that out there too. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. And I believe that was all I was aware of from the select board side, Gordy. 
Well, if you I, believe, somebody. I believe that's the same because I missed the first few minutes. So Scott, unless there's something else, I believe we can move forward and entertain motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Second. You want me to take a vote first, Eric, and then you guys do it? Yeah, or? go ahead. All right. All those in favor of the motion signify the aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, everyone. Is the board, the select board prepared to take a motion to adjourn? So moved. A motion? A second? Second. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.